Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna go over all the parts needed to LS swap a 73 to 87 square body shed. got everything laid out here we've got a blue long bed out front it's an 83 model we're getting ready to put a 5.3 and a 60 in so to start we got a 5.3 from lkq it's just a gen 3 5.3 i don't remember the exact mileage on it we've got the paperwork on uh, we're leaving this thing in stock trim so it's going in pretty much just the way it is now we got a brand new 4L60 from Tim Smith at Smith Transmissions down in Bradford Arkansas brand new stock converter we didn't beef it up at all we just did a stock one but we did want him to have the security of a brand new transmission and not have to deal with a used unit that may fail or may not even be good from the jump. There's our power plant. We've got that. Now we've got everything laid out on the table and kind of laid out on the floor over here. We'll kind of go over everything. This is going to be the typical stuff that we use on our swaps. You know, to start, we've got our wiring harness. If we're running a stock ECM, we get with our good friends over at BP Automotive. They always take care of us. When you open the box, you're going to get a quick start guide. A full installation manual that's got not just good instructions but pictures inside as well gives you descriptions of what all your wires are and they break it down by the bundles coming out of the harness as well your uh, fan installation setup brake switch all the little extra stuff all the details it's in here so if you're swapping and you're running a, a stock ECM holler at BP that's the way to go there's our quality control approval saying that they tested this thing. We've got five, five ohms of resistance across the board. And there's our harness. If you're looking to simplify EFI, then BP is the way to go. There's everything for the engine right there. And you get on there and you tell them what alternator you have. You tell them what injectors you're running. Whether you're Gen 3, Gen 4, whether you're drive-by wire, drive-by cable. And they essentially build you a harness or send you a harness that's built for what you need. For this particular one, we're going drive-by cable. We've got transmission control. And we're running Multec injectors. We're going to be running a 99-02 to 02 style truck PCM, which is red and blue connectors. We've got our standalone fuse block. We did not opt in for the fan control on this for some reason, so we are going to have to uh, get him a fan harness. But we've got our fan relay controls. We've got our fuel pump. And we've got our various wires that go inside of the dash and quality OBD2 connector. So this is what we'll be using to run this thing. Keeping the engine bay tidy. No old busted loom. No extra wires from a stock harness being improperly deep pinned no broken connectors broken wires and this unit's been tested now we'll move on to the next big box on the table this is a simple piece but it's very effective this is the speed engineering cold air intake for universal applications it comes with the standard mid pipe and what i really like about this kit is they give you quality very good quality band clamps they give you plenty of them they send you a good variety of boots different diameters, different lengths. We've got two 90s in there. You know, most of the cheap cold air intakes, they come with very limited boots. You don't end up having what you need. And then you end up spending at least $50 on single boots at the parts store trying to piece together what you need. Another cool thing about this universal kit is they send you multiple MAF adapters. So whether you've got the old school, early model, big three inch that goes in line with a couple boots, are you running a card style like an LS3? Or you got the round card style. You got multiple adapters. Like I said, they give you the boots and the clamps to go with those. We got our bracket, some hardware, and a brand new cone filter. They look a lot better than the cheap Amazon ones, eBay ones, and they come with better, better clamps, more boots. These range anywhere from, depending on which one you get, they've got kits specifically for the trucks, uh, 99 to 14. They're usually like 100, around 130 bucks or so, plus taxes and shipping. These run around 150, but it's just the standard of what we use. For all of our swaps, a lot of people go to the ICT billet motor mounts, the motor mount adapters. The one thing I don't like about the ICT billet motor mount adapters is they have several sets of holes. 
So if you bolt that thing up and it's not on the right set of holes for your transmission spacing and where your motor needs to sit, you have to pick the motor back up, take the motor mounts off, move the adapter brackets, and try again. Try that until you get it right. I'm a huge fan of these Dirty Dingo slider mounts. Now these are raw. You can order them powder coated too. Sometimes we order them powder coated black. But this is the passenger side. This is the driver's side. And what you do is you bolt these to the block, leave the bolts just a little loose, just enough to where you can slide these mounts. And when you set your motor and trans in, you can actually slide these mounts and get it to where you line up where you need to drop them on the motor mounts themselves to make sure you're where you want to be. After that, you just tighten your four bolts up, put your big bolt in, and you're done. Another thing I like about the Dirty Dingo stuff is they give you a bag of brand new hardware. And it's all grade 8 stuff. Alright, now here we got some ECM mounts we ordered. And then we sent them down and we had our logo put on them. Uh, we're going to start doing this on every build that we use a stock ECM. I said we're running a 99-02 to 02 truck ECM. And these just bolt on there and then you bolt it down inside the engine bay somewhere on like an inner fender or something. Uh, not a big deal. But pretty cool little custom piece. We've got his throttle cable. We did a stainless braided throttle cable. You can pick these up, they're about 30 bucks, 40 bucks, something like that. But they're nice, keep the engine bay clean and nice too as well. This little box right here, the contents in it pack a wallet. This is called the Ultra Gauge. A small display that plugs up OBD2 and gives you a ton of PID readouts for vitals and different things. Um, these little things do a lot. I can't take this plastic off until we plug this thing up and make sure it works or it voids the warranty. We've put these in in a few vehicles and they're great for somebody that doesn't have the budget to run a digital dash just yet, but still needs to see the vitals. For what this thing costs, you, you'll buy a three pod gauge setup that's like an oil pressure or a water temp and a voltage, but then you still don't have a tack. You don't have a speedometer. You don't have fuel. There's a lot of things that you're not gonna have versus this thing just picks up information from the ECM via OBD2 and gives you a ton of readouts and it's completely customizable for your screen on what you see it as far as readouts. I think after shipping and everything they run around 120 bucks or so. Like I said, bang for the buck, you can't beat that. So instead of selling the little three pod gauge setups from O'Reilly's with mechanical gauges that look tacky, they don't look good, we started selling these and that's also something that is easy for the customer to pull out once they do do gauge do it once they do go with a Dakota Digital or an Intellutronics or Autometer Envision or something like that. They can pull this thing out and put it up in a box somewhere and keep it for the next one or sell it if they want to. We are putting one of those in this long bed that we're about to swap. So I wanted to show you guys that. Now we're gonna move on to a couple front accessory pieces. Necessarily aren't needs to swap a square body, but if you want to stay cool, you got a new AC compressor. When I was telling you about the Dirty Dingo motor mount, I was not trying to relate anything negative onto ICT Billet. We love ICT Billet. We use a ton of their products. I love their front accessory mounts, um, their throttle cable brackets. They make various little pieces that I love. This right here is one of them. This is their R4 style AC compressor mount for an LS for truck accessories. Now this is going to mount on the passenger head and the water pump. And it's a nice piece. It comes with quality tensioner and then everything we need including instructions to get this mount set up. And you can also go to ICT's website and under the product description of this, along with other front accessory mounts that they sell, they will tell you a list of part numbers that, of belts that work with their accessory setups. So next we're going to move on to the fuel system. We are direct dealers for Quantum Fuel Systems. They make a direct drop in for these trucks that goes inside of a factory style tank. Now when you're LS swapping a square body, the thing about the square body specifically is from 73 to 86, all of them were carbureted. There was not a fuel injected square body from 73 to 86. The only year of square body trucks that was fuel injected was 1987, considered the R10. Now from 87 to 91, your Suburbans and OBS pickups had the same TBI set up as the 87 R10s did. The thing that's special about the 87 R10 is it being a fuel injected vehicle from the factory, its fuel tank is capable of EFI. So it has baffles inside that keep the fuel from sloshing. If you have a 73 to 86, 86 and you do not change the fuel tank and get one for an 87 that has baffles, 
then under acceleration, when the fuel sloshes, the vehicle is going to cut out. It's just not compatible with a high pressure EFI system. So what we do is we have a part number from, I think it's Spectre. I believe we have a part number from them for the 1987 factory replacement fuel tank that comes with the baffles. They're around 110, 120 bucks, somewhere in there. But it's a brand new fuel tank, so you're, you're not risking any trash or rust or debris running through your entire fuel system. And it has the baffles inside of it for EFI. And then once we get with Quantum and get this drop-in unit that's ready to go, it's got our sending unit, harness. We don't have to worry about any quick connect connectors because we got we opted in for the one that has the AN lines on it, the AN fittings on it. We're going to ground this to the chassis, plug this up to the factory harness, and this thing will be ready to rock. And I'm pretty sure on that one we went with a 255 liter per hour pump because we're just running a stock 5.3 in this thing. All right, so moving on, we've got our inline filter. Uh, it does come with all your fittings to go in line for 8 a.m. and 6 a.m. and I think 10 a.m. as well. And then here we're running an Evil Energy fuel regulator. It's a vacuum reference. We've had pretty good luck out of these so far. I haven't had any issues out of any yet. Uh, pretty much just looks like a Holly unit. Uh, it does come with a gauge, which is nice to have in the engine bay while you're setting fuel pressure, especially on something where you're running a stock ECM and you're not running like a Holly where you have a sensor on the rail. It comes with another an extra spring to be able to change stuff around and be able to change the compatibility with the regulator with your fuel system. And then, of course, the various amounts of fittings and some Teflon tank. A ton of 6AN fittings here. Various. We got 45s. We got 180s. We got straights. We got 90s. We got a ton of stuff here. We've got some clamps to hold lines together. And then we opted in for some 6AN braided line to make his fuel lines and transmission lines with. Our stainless steel headers from Speed Engineering. These are 73 to 87 specific. They're stainless. One thing I like about speed engineering is they weld them up on the insides, not just in the collector, but also at the flange. Uh, O2 placement's typically pretty decent. Could be back a little bit more, but you know, it's long tube headers, come on now. What's cool about this system though is you can opt in and get a full exhaust kit. Now, if you follow us on TikTok, you've probably seen us put this exhaust kit on a couple trucks already. Uh, we've got one on our square body. It's a full bolt-in kit. It comes with an X-pipe. It's three inch stainless all the way back. It comes with two mufflers and it dumps at the axle and it's right at $400. I don't know where else you can find a bang for the buck full stainless exhaust for a truck with a swapped engine that's full bolt-in and comes with your trans cross member for around $800. Headers all the way back. I don't know where else you're going to find that, but Speed Engineering has got you covered. Uh, I love this system. It sounds great. It's not nasty sounding going down the road. It's calm, it's tame, but at the same time, if you've got some cubic inches or a big ass camshaft, it moves some ground. I mean, it sounds good. Uh, the X pipe's good. Like I said, it's all stainless. It's all TIG welded. I mean, you just, man, you can't beat it. It comes with the hangers, it comes with the clamps. I mean, just all around bang for the buck stuff, man. Lastly, the last piece of the puzzle we've got here is our swap radiator. When it comes to our swap radiators, we tend to run an all aluminum three row. It comes with a shroud and e-fans. Now you can get these kits on Amazon or eBay. I don't condone cheap parts, but we've used enough of these and seen good luck and had good luck out of them. Picky on the ones we choose. That's the key with buying parts off of Amazon or eBay. You're gonna find something that has good reviews, good ratings and reviews and ratings from real people. I don't remember the exact brand of this, but this is the same one that we've run in our square body. And we've been putting them in several trucks. They do have the transmission cooler line ports, but we don't use those. We put auxiliary coolers on everything. And then we wire this up to a BP fan harness, fan relay kit. Uh, you can pick these up from anywhere, a couple hundred bucks, 300 bucks, somewhere in there, for one that's not the cheapest one you can find. Like that's the key to using anything off of Amazon or eBay is don't use the cheapest one you can find. Search around, find something that's got good reviews, good ratings, something that's got pictures where people have posted it and gave a good honest review. And you might even find something that has a lot of reviews and pretty decent ratings, but then you start reading the reviews and that's when you find out, okay, this thing probably not what I'm looking for. You don't always win that way, but we've had good luck with these, so we continue to use them. But that's gonna sum up this episode. In the next episode, we're gonna dive into dropping the motor and trans in the truck, getting the harness and everything set into place, and start getting this stuff bolted on and set up, ready to go. Remember to subscribe, like, and comment. Let us know if you enjoy the content. If there's any questions or anything like that, drop one in the comments. I'll answer it to the best of my ability. And as we go through this process, we will drop in the other parts that we're using in this build 
and some of the other things that are our go-to choice for parts when swapping these C10s and these old square bodies. Remember to like and follow us on our socials and TikTok and Facebook at 727 Motorsports. And next time you see us, we'll be in here dropping that motor and trains in there and getting this thing ready to swap. Y'all have a good one.